Today we're going to be making a set of pyramid anchors from the larger one that you saw there and we're going to be using scrap material. And when I say scrap material, it's still good quality decent material. This is roughly 8th inch plate and it's going to work quite well for what we're going to do. Now it's pretty simple. I'm just going to trace around the outside of this to get the general shape. I absolutely love jobs like this because it's just kind of a non-precision put it together kind of situation. Now, I'm just going to flip it around to the other side. Now, I've kept the same side of the anchor just in case the previous manufacturer kind of did something wonky and it's a little bit different of a shape. And then I'm going to trace that out as well. I'm also leaving a little bit of a gap for my zip disc to go in between there so I'm not cutting into the material making one side smaller. Now, I just have to grab the strat combination square and just mark a groove along the top of the marker. Then I'm going to make my vertical square and then I'm just going to grab the weight and just to give me a general idea of how wide it's going to be, I'm going to mark it out. Now off camera, I did measure the second square to make sure both squares are exactly the same size. Uniformity in this situation is really, really important. That'll make a little bit more sense later when I put this all together. Now I'm pretty sure you see some safety things there, missing the guard. And I'm going to have to find that guard. I have no idea where that guard ran off to. But we'll find that maybe a little bit later and put that guard back on. So recently a realization has just struck me. Not literally, but <laughs> figuratively. Is the cutoff discs that I've been using previously have just been cheap, cheap jobber cutoff discs. And now I'm getting into using good quality cutoff discs. Um, and it is completely night and day the quality and how long they last. I mean, this disc here normally with a cheap jobber one, by the time I was done the job, it would have been gone. And this thing's hanging on here quite well. And I'm not getting a lot of that dust that's getting thrown around the shop. So with this one here, if you just notice, I ran it over and created a little groove first, just so I can kind of follow the line. Because I marked it out with the marker, sometimes when you heat up the metal, that marker is going to disappear. Now, it's just a matter of cutting out these squares, super simple, and then we're just going to clean them up and make sure they're nice and square. One of the other things that's really important is making sure that these triangles are the same dimensions. Now, they don't necessarily have to be perfectly triangle, however, they do have to match each other, and they can't be upside down because one angle might be slightly out. This will make a little bit more sense, once again, as we go down the road. But for now, I'm very, very happy with how these are looking. And let's put these off to the side and let's get over to the welding shop and get welding. I've probably got another project coming down the road, a welding table, but for now, let's get back to this project here. Now, remember that geometry is important. As long as I line up that corner with that edge down there, everything's going to be pretty much bang on. I mean, I shouldn't have to use a square. And I'm kind of testing this theory here, and it's a little bit more work because I'm testing this theory, but the geometry does work out in the end, and it actually does make a square triangle. <laughs> okay, not a square triangle, but the bottom of the triangle is square. I think, I think you're kind of getting what I'm saying. So moving further into the project, I'm just going to tack it together, and man, it's a good thing I tacked it together because I wound up having to rip this all apart. <laughs> because I'm doing this little no square science experiment to see if the geometry is going to line up. And the geometry actually did line up. I mean, corner to corner, it's only out a 32nd of an inch. Also, science experiment number two, um, you've probably noticed that this is not a Miller 211 whip. This is a Bernard whip. And I'm having a few issues with the new swap over because I've got 045 tips on there. In fact, I've actually got a big box of these 045 tips and I'm running 035 wire. This combined with running it hot, it keeps welding to the inside of the tip, which means I just need to give it a tap and it'll break free. However, I'm going to explain here in a couple seconds why I'm running it so hot and it'll make a little bit more sense to you. But for now, we're just going to do a full send it and we're just going to weld this all up on the outside that is, and then we'll work on the inside. Okay, now let's flip it around to the inside and have a look at this. Now, there is a specific welding technique that's important to use here. 
I'm going to do two passes, and I'm going to burn it in really hot. We're looking for kind of a concave or a really good fillet on this well. We don't want any caterpillars here because that's going to make a lot of extra grinding. And it'll make sense here in a second when I show it to you. Also, if you're a skilled tradesman like myself and you want to build one of these, I'll drop some blueprints for you and I'll have them posted on the YouTube channel somewhere and I'll put the link in the notes below. Okay, that worked out quite well. I'm quite happy with how that well turned out. It was a bit of a risk actually, just being able to burn it in there and get it that dish, dish kind of feel to it. Now there's gonna be a bit of cleanup work with the Dremel grinder, but it's actually gonna go a little quicker than I think here. The problem that I'm here having here is a lot of this spatter and being able to get my, uh, <laughs> being able to get my uh, grinder in there with a, with a wire wheel probably isn't gonna work. So there's gonna be a bit of hand scraping with the file, but we're not gonna make you bear through all that. Let's get started. So I really lucked out with this die grinder. I kind of stumbled across the die grinder just before I welded it. And I noticed on the stone, it was the same diameter as the corner probably would have turned out to be. And it's it's working really, really well. I mean, look, <laughs> look at that shape. It's really important also to remember that when you're doing casting, whatever defect you leave behind, you're gonna leave behind on the end product as well. And this is where the day kind of started to turn. Oh, that's hot. Fuck. And of course, this was the only stone that was in existence in my shop. And on ensued the 45 minute look through every drawer and every cranny in the hide and go seek game of, do I have another one of those parts? I mean, I even got desperate. I started looking in bolt bins, I looked in the handle drawer, and <laughs> there was just no sign of it. And I even looked in the place that it should be, in the grinder box where all the grinding wheels are, and I found some really cool gems, like a grinding guard and a handle. <laughs> I might have to put those on a little bit later. And you know what? This cone stone's gonna work out quite well. So, I mean, it wasn't at all a complete loss. And in the end, you know what I'm going to have to do is I'm probably going to have to jump in the truck and I'm going to head over to my dad's place and see if he's got anything. Ah, uh, yes. And good old dad who lives down the road, we did the 45 minute search at his shop and look what we came up with. This was the only one left in his existence as well. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to jump on KBC tools and order myself up a whole bunch just so I don't have this problem happen again. And I'll probably have to order him one as well, maybe two. I mean, the search wasn't all a waste. I mean, I came up with some extra sides from the scrap bin and we welded those on so the lead doesn't tip over. So now I'm gonna take the torch and I'm gonna throw some soot on the bottom of the pot. This is kind of important because it, it kind of acts as a release agent for me so that when I'm melting this lead here, it's not gonna stick to the pot. Now, I also have the wife's scale <laughs> covered in a Ziploc bag, so we don't get lead on that as well. Which leads me to the next point. There are a lot of safety things that I have to take into consideration when I'm melting lead. The first one is going to be making sure that we're in a well-ventilated area. The second is making sure every single thing that goes near molten lead is dry, including the lead that's going to go in the pot as well. Also, the second thing here, I'm gonna take the safety note, is don't copy what I'm doing here. Now, the reason why you don't wanna do this here is because this torch is extremely hot and it runs the risk of vaporizing the lead, which means it's gonna put that lead into the air and if you breathe that lead in, you're gonna get lead poisoning and it, lead poisoning never goes away. This is something really important for you to remember um, because it's gonna stick in your brain, in your body, in your liver and it's just going to be a bad, bad scenario for months, years, and weeks on end. The next step that I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn the burner off, and then I'm going to grab a dry tool, and I'm going to skim the slag off the top of this. Now, the slag is basically just impurities that float to the top. And, oh, also, a did-you-know moment. Did you know that 
steel will float on lead. <laughs> it is it is pretty cool. Um, let's show you that here in a second. Let's grab the dry eye bolt, which is preheated, by the way, so that there's no moisture in it. And let's plop that in there. That's really cool. The bottom of the bolt's actually floating. And I kind of had to wedge it into the bottom so that it only wanted to go straight up. And it worked quite well. Now, I gave it about 15 minutes, so it's dry. And this is going to give it a bit of a whack at that lead hammer that I casted before. And this turned out quite well. Let's have a closer look. Hey, if you like this video, you're probably going to like this video here. Why don't you check this one out as well? We'll catch you on the next video and stay safe.